Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, good evening and may peace be upon us. This is actually a very unusual time for us to be inside in this room while outside there. Actually, the sun is very clear and in Bali, and this is about the sunset time, actually. So, with that, I will just be brief uh, for this uh, uh, ceremony. But I know why the organizing committee take this time, because we want tomorrow that when we start the workshop, it will be very effective. We will not be bothered by this kind of ceremony anymore, so we can start the <laughs> discussion. I am pleased to welcome you here in Bali, Indonesia. It has always been a pleasure for me to meet colleagues from around the world, to get together and being actively involved in this kind of important dialogue. For the next two days, we are here to discuss an, an ever-increasing initiative the Triangle Cooperation as part of Global Movement on Aid Effectiveness. These two participants, we all know the increasing importance of social cooperation and triangular cooperation. The Akara Agenda for Action, people acknowledge that the importance and particularities of social cooperation as well as its important role in the development cooperation. Social cooperation is seen as valuable complement to North-South development cooperation. We also know, as stipulated in particular, that further development of triangular cooperation is encouraged. It plays a vital role of bridging the effort and resources of traditional OECD development partners and the different countries providing and receiving knowledge. A lot of enthusiasm can be felt at many places, as, as donors such as Canada, Germany, Japan, Spain and others are investing in triangular partnership. The involved partners often feel that triangular cooperation creates two opportunities of win-win situation where all partners from North and South can learn from each other. And indeed, in today's multipolar world, this modality should become much wider spread as it helps to overcome the traditional North-South logic. However, triangular cooperation also faces challenges. This will be discussed in detail over the next couple of days. All of you will bring in essential lessons on these challenges, and I know that you will have a very fruitful discussion. As a start, I could mention three important things that need to be considered when developing this triangle cooperation. First, the triangle cooperation can only grow and be effective if it is based on development strategies and fully respect the leadership of the visiting partners. So it means this uh, ownership and leadership of the countries, the partners, will be very important. Secondly, should be simple. You mentioned that. You know, when we are talking North, South and South, we already have a problem of complication. Yes, we want to control, we want to have accountability. But we should make it now simple, easy to understand to the countries in order also to make the absorption is very much uh, uh, smooth. Right now, even in our, con in our country, Indonesia, the North South cooperation that we have, the OGA tradition cooperation that we have, we still face some of the problem of the delay. And this is the issue that also, you know, that we have in the aid effectiveness. When the procedure is very much complex, then there's a problem on, on the implementation because of the complexity. And third one, people empowerment, broad participation. Why at the end we want the project, the program is sustainable. And only the people is themselves they can make this uh, sustainable. So with that, I think people participation people empowerment is very important in all the programs that they have. So I think that is uh, the three things that um, may, not, may need to be uh, explored and I, I believe you have many more of that one. Uh, but I think the one that I just mentioned also is, uh, is very important and that is also a key dimension of the aid effectiveness which needs to be ensured in both South-South and triangular cooperation. 
Ladies and gentlemen, recent economic crisis that hit most of the development partners really affect their aid policies and direction. And uh, I, I will add also, I will focus on the climate change. Also, this is kind of make also some deviation for our, our uh, traditional development cooperation. We could expect a sharp decline on aid budget as well as a more pragmatic approach in its implementation. In parallel, the farm countries are vulnerable to the impact of the crisis in different ways and through various transmission channels. Unless we can come up with appropriate response, this could create a downward spiral on the international development cooperation. The good news is that the picture is not all big. Some emerging countries are now come into the development cooperation scheme. Several middle-income countries are also up and coming, both as donors and recipients of aid. Taking for example the case of China, India, Brazil, and as well as Indonesia, apart, as well as Indonesia. Apart from the BRICS, we also feel that there is an important space for the TFAT countries. Among them, Colombia and Indonesia, the so-called third wave of different players. All this creates a new perspective on the north to south, south to south, and the triangular development cooperation. And our guests, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia is among the few countries that have a long history in the implementation of the south south cooperation. It has been practiced for the past four decades and, there, and the triangular cooperation in recent years. Our south south cooperation took it from the Asia Africa Declaration in Bandung back in 1955. It was then followed by the non-line movement, G77, G15, D8, and other similar movements. For Indonesia, South South Cooperation is not an ad hoc initiative, but part of our medium-term reform strategy as stipulated in our national medium-term reform plan. Yes, we, we already done this for quite some time, but even in Indonesia, we also now I try to review what we have been done in social cooperation for, for the last decades, for several decades, that uh, we would like also to make our social cooperation is more effective. In the past, the line ministry agencies doing that uh, fragmented one by one. So now we would like to combine them together in order to make uh, synergy between all our efforts in our social cooperation. And then at present, as part of the G20 and co-chair, together with Colombia of the TTSC, Indonesia remain committed to strengthen the social as well as the triangular cooperation. We have plenty to offer from our own experience in the social economic area. We have, among others, the national program for community empowerment, the, the school operational assistance and the disaster recovery program. As you may all know that we are vulnerable to disasters. Every year we have so many earthquakes. We have also some tsunamis and the big tsunamis in 2004. We have all volcanoes, eruption. So in last year, for instance, in October, we have three major disasters hit us. So we are not quite, quite experienced how to deal with this emergency on, on uh, uh, natural disasters and how we are doing also the rehabilitation and the constructions. We also, in the political area, we have experience in managing the post-conflict resolutions. We are also becoming a very uh, decentralized country since 2000. From the centralized country becoming decentralized, our decentralization is going to the district level. We have a 500 24 uh, local governments. You could imagine that every year we have 100, around 110 direct election. So every year we have a kind of uh, election, every, almost every every week. Uh, we have also became becoming so democratic. Uh, we can say uh, every year we like a demo, uh, demonstration. So. We sometimes chase demonstration and democracy, democracy and democracy. <laughs> but this is part of part of us becoming uh, democracy, democratic countries. So we would like to share the experience. 
to a larger country. Because at the end we feel this is the right way to go. Maybe there's an efficacy cost because, you know, uh, it's it more costly to make a decision because then we have to deal with the people. You, have, you need to have uh, so many public children. But I think this is a kind of uh, education to learn, learn for us. And, and we believe this is uh, the way to go. The Bali Democracy Forum, for instance, is also our initiative that we well received by the international community. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the G20 recently mandated the TTSSC together with the NDP to provide recommendation on how knowledge sharing, North, South and South South can be scaled up. We are indeed in a promising moment for shaping new thinking around development corporations which might become better adapted to the contribution and potential of all countries. And the younger population has a critical role to play by bridging this dynamic. It's already mentioned also by Sandra and Andreas before. As the chair of the university delegate in the developing working group and in G20 and involved directly in the discussion of the non sharing and South South and Tender cooperation, I am confident that this form of partnership may be able to take forward the development in developing countries while being responsive to the dynamic of development partners. Ladies and gentlemen, this event is expected to contribute to the preparatory work of the High Level Forum on AFPV in Busan, South Korea, this coming November, and other related events on South South and Triangular Cooperation. In the view of that, I would like to invite your participation and engagement in this workshop by means of sharing your invaluable experience and ideas to formulate practical recommendations based on good and workable practice. This is important to make the South South and Triangle Cooperation be an effective and efficient modality of delivery aid. I also understand that some of you will be participating in the two side events, namely workshop for case writers and the meeting of steering committee of TTSE. TTSSE. So this is three in one. Three meetings in one occasion. It's very good. So we are very, very efficient and hope also very effective. I hope this that this side event, as important as the regional workshop, will be fruitful. I believe that the beauty of Bali and its positive atmosphere would facilitate us to come up with the best result that can be shared and be implemented around the world. For any of you who read the book of Eat, Pray and Love, or maybe seen the movie, uh, starred by Julia Roberts. So, Eat, Pray and, eat, pray, and Love, you can get it here. <laughs> you don't need to go to these countries. <laughs> but even maybe in other countries also you will have that. But with the spirit of that, especially the love, the caring to the people who need, uh, who need the support from everybody. I hope that this discussion also can give a proof, fruitful recommendation that will bring hope to the people everywhere, uh, all over the world. Before I formally open this workshop, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our partners, the Democratic Society of Casting and Social Cooperation, the Co-Chef, Ruski uh, Sandra and Achusni, the GIZ of Germany, ADB Institute, JICA of Japan, and my colleagues in aid for Development, uh, development Effectiveness Secretariat, uh, Mr. Dodi and the team, that have worked closely to make this event possible. With the blessing of God Almighty, I officially open the regional workshop of Triangular Cooperation. Thank you very much. We also would like to invite to accompany Honorable Alzate and Honorable Beckerman.